do you think Mike Curtis would have fared as yeah. a player for you? <laughs> no. um, and, and a little more on, on some yeah. of what the guy said about him. Uh, Mike is. He is terrific. I, I'll tell you a quick story about Mike. Um, when I was the head coach at Washington State, uh, my father had retired from Washington State, and Coach Beeline asked him to come and speak at the Michigan Coaches Clinic. And, and Mike was the strength coach. And my dad just happened to, it was before he went on to give his, the, the clinic. And Mike was presenting to all the Michigan State high school coaches. My dad came back and he said, you know, he said, son, I don't usually watch those. I don't even get into that. He said, but I was enthralled. He said, that is one of the best uh, presentations. And a guy who gets it about the game of basketball, he said, do everything in your power to send out, you know, your strength coach. Um, Dave Lang, who um, passed away, uh, is a wonderful man when he was at Washington State. Um, but um, he said, send him out, learn from this guy. He's one of the best. So ironically, when I got the job at Virginia, um, I didn't really think about it. And then I said, all right, we got to hire a strength coach. I'm like, the guy that my father mentioned. Didn't know he was a UVA alum. Didn't know he played with Jason Williford. Didn't know his grandparents lived in Charlottesville, so that's kind of how it happened. He's unique. I had played in the NBA. I've been around some of the best strength coaches. He has six years of experience in that. He gets offered jobs all the time. He has a unique way, a different kind of system. That's as cutting edge as I've seen. So he's um, there's so many great coaches in college basketball, and I you know I can't say, oh, well, we, we got the best coaching staff. I would never say that. We have one of the best, if not the best, strength and conditioning coach. He's that good. As far as his game, I never saw it. I, um, I, it he's tough, so I think he could have worked out, and he's very serious. Um, so, but I need to see some film before I can really comment on that. So, you have to ask Coach Williford. He played with him. We'll go to the back row here on the right, and then we'll go to the two in the middle. Yeah, Tony, what would be your message to Kihei in terms of guarding Carson Edwards tomorrow? What does he have to do to kind of slow him down a little bit? Yeah, he's, um, well, they, they have, you know, Klein and Edwards, they're terrific shooters, among other players. Um, Kihei or whoever's on him, when you play players that are that special, um, that can shoot from unlimited range, you just you do your best as a team to make it hard for him and then individually to, to make him hit tough contested shots. That's always the goal of the defense, and uh, he can get loose and, he can shoot off the bounce, off the ball screen. So he's a, you know, in all levels can score and he's explosive and strong. Um, and just, you know, you got to be so locked in, so alert because their offense is so good. Um, it's not just, you know, ISO ball for him. It's a whole lot of everything. So it's being continuous and, and making him work and, and trying to accept the challenge as a team. But it's not just Carson. It's, it's the other stuff. Matt does a great job of layering their, their offenses and, uh, and a quick turnaround, you better play your principles well because you can't know everything they're going to do. Uh, Tony, Matt Norlander, CBS okay. Sports. Um, uh, in light of how well they shot, uh, Kyle Guy, career 43% three-point shooter. In this tournament alone, he's at about 12%. In, in fact, an NCAA tournament play over the course of his career, it's just he's been aberrationally bad. So uh, talk about sticking to your principles. Like, how key will he be to have the kind of game that he normally has mm -hmm. given the opponent and you know what Purdue's going to want to do, how often it shoots the three? Like, are you expecting yeah. him to have not only have a big game, but him playing well from distance being key to you guys getting onto the Final Four? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Kyle, the one thing I'm, I'm telling you I'm really proud about with Kyle is there's maybe you, you got to give Kyle freedom because he's a moment away from getting it rolling. But he has stepped up his game defensively. He's competing at a high level. Um, he's, he's so keyed upon, um, but he's passing. He's making some plays. The rest of his game has been strong, and it's always noticeable for a guy, a shooter of his reputation when it's not going. And of course, that's, that's helpful for us in a major way. But he has, um, as long as he's taking good shots and you give him that freedom for the most part to, to do what he does. He took a shot yesterday and he said, my, my fault, coach. It was a quick one in transition. Uh, he understands that. He was talking to Mommy when there was that little exchange. So that's what a good player does. Their value is just, it's not just if the ball's going in the hole. And that's something young players have a hard time with. But we're going to need it all tomorrow. Not perfection, but we're going to need a high level performance because Purdue is good defensively and good offensively. Um, they didn't win the Big Ten because they snuck up on people. Um, so I think we're going to need a complete performance from everyone. And that was unique yesterday where, you know, Dre and Kyle, from an offensive standpoint, weren't as efficient as they have been all year. But um, our defense, it just kept us in there. And Kihei and Kyle made enough big plays and Mamadi and, and the other guys. And that's, 
that's what you have to do. So that's. Let's go to the back right corner and then to the right middle and then up here in front on the left side. Tony, hi, Chip Scoggins from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. When you told DeAndre that he's redshirt, was that a difficult conversation? And in what ways did that year benefit him? Yeah, it was huge. Uh, well, first, uh, when I saw DeAndre in high school, I, there's some guys you just watch and you say, oh, they have a chance to touch greatness. They, they, they have a, there's something in them. And I saw him, um, you know, he was hurt for some of his high school career. And I saw him and I thought, boy, he could be a guy that could really, you know, keep taking this program to a good spot. He had a high ankle sprain right when we were getting ready to start playing. We had practiced, and so it was he was going to miss I don't know how long. And what I told him, and you could see the potential is there, but what I said is if you redshirt, you can go to work on your body and your skills. And I, don't, I can't guarantee you how much time is going to be there if you don't redshirt. It's always the player's decision. I always do that. I'm sure he was expecting to come in and play a lot, but I thought if he would use that year – correctly as he did it could be huge uh, Malcolm Brogdon did that for us Anthony Gill I can go down the list of guys Mike Scott um, where it really served him well whether it was because of an injury or a transfer or whatever and uh, I thought it was significant and then even in his first year he wasn't playing a whole lot consistently early on and then he just but he stayed patient and it was hard that's hard for every player that's the hardest thing as a coach you know and I I understand that I know that's hard when you know I Braxton and Jay and Jack, you know, they didn't get to play much yesterday. They desperately want to play. But those who will stay patient and work and work, and as he did, um, you could just see it was coming. But it was just fine-tuning. And he's still got room to grow, which is, I think, very exciting. But, yeah, that was just – it was more presented to him and say, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And it's – if you're willing to, to wait, I think it can be a positive. But if you don't want to, then we'll, we'll go after it the way you want. That was the conversation. Okay, back row on the right side, then to the mid second row, and then we'll come here to the front row on the left. Caroline, uh, Caroline Darney, SB Nation. Coach, do you allow yourself, any win's a good win, obviously, especially at this point in the season, do yep. you allow yourself to revel a little bit in a defensive battle like that you had last night? And how has the quick turns in the ACC provided the opportunity to prepare for right. the dra dramatic changes in style, whether it's a top 15 yes. defense against Oregon, now a top five offense in mm -hmm. Purdue? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, when, when you maybe don't play your best offensively and you find ways to win, I think you, you do revel or you, you're, you're thankful for that and you, you look at that because that, it has to be that way. That's the game. You know, certain things have to be constants. You know, offense can sometimes go in and out. We've been efficient most of the year offensively, but not yesterday, a large part due to the, the Oregon defense, and some of it was us, you know, not being as good as we've been. But we found enough ways, and the defense was there. So yes, that part was that's important. And to, you know, to advance to this point, and um, do what these guys have done in, in the face of everything this year, for sure. Um, and then the second part of the question was, oh, the turnaround. Yeah, we had three ties set at last night on the podium. Three Saturday Monday games. Um, when I coached at Washington State, it was always a Saturday. It was a Thursday Saturday league most of the time. It was always that one day in between. Um, and I know it's the Pac-12 now. It was a Pac-10 when I was there, so I know people. Um, but the, um, the ability to, to have those turnarounds and play different styles is important. Um, and so it's, it's how you prepare this day. Um, it's unique how late we got done last night. And like you asked those guys when they got to bed, those are the challenges. But you rest. And, uh, and I told the guys, I said, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I said, probably tired, didn't sleep great. I said, Legs are probably a little fatigued. I said, you know what? Everybody's like that at this stage. It's worth it. So you just got to fight through that. And um, again, turning it quick, having a good practice, good film, and understanding, um, again, what Purdue does. So I think there are some advantages of doing it. I'm sure Purdue did it in the, the Big Ten. Um, but you have to rely on those experiences to sharpen you. And we talked about that when those games were there. I can remember after we played Duke, and got beat, and I said to our guys and before the game in the North Carolina locker room, I said, okay, I said, if you're fortunate enough to advance in the NCAA tournament, let's assume you had a good win against Duke, or you, know, you, just, you had a good win. Yeah, we didn't. I said, you're going to have to play a big-time opponent, a one-day's prep, and you're going to have to go in in a tough environment and do it. And I said, in a way, set your mind to that. And that's what we tried to do, you know, gardner Webb to Oklahoma, in, in that kind of way. So. I know I'm being long-winded, but it cuts down your questions, so that's why I'm doing it, so I can, I can get out of here. My time's almost up, right? So uh, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, 
<laughs> been here 10 years at Virginia, so no. But um, does that answer the, okay. Right Tony, obviously your father, I know, has been a huge influence on your life. But yeah. as you get older, as we all do, do you hear his voice in your head and even maybe sometimes coming out of your mouth occasionally you're parroting things that he said and, and, and if so how grateful are you to just kind of channel all of that into what yeah. you're doing I was so fortunate I did a with Westwood one with Will Purdue he asked me some questions to be under my father when he had to um, do some major rebuilding of programs when I played for him at Green Bay and then I watched him rebuild and I was with him at Wisconsin and then at Washington State that's huge to watch that up close and personal to see someone who's willing to be patient and not be distracted and watch them go through it and what it takes to build and how they stay true to who they are and what they know will work with, with little adjustments, invaluable. And then um, to know that, you know, when he instructed me as a player, a coach, and even when he speaks to me, you know, now over the years, it's, it's changed a little bit. It, it comes from a place of love. And you, when you can trust that, he, he would always quote a proverb to me. He'd say, son, wounds from a friend are better than kisses from an enemy. So that meant I was going to either be told I'm doing a crappy job or something. But, he, but he'd speak the truth. He'd say, hey, the, you need to hear these things. And he always would say to me, learn from my mistakes as a coach. That stuff's invaluable. He said, I, I screwed up in this part. or I didn't spend enough time talking to the players. I got so tunnel vision. So when someone can speak to you like that, um, whenever I've had head coaches on my staff, Coach McKay, Coach Soberg, said, hey, look, this is where I maybe missed it, and I, I listen as closely as I can. So, but yes, his, I, I definitely there's things, if I could be half the coach he is, I'd be thankful. And I just, the reason why I got into this profession, I didn't think I was gonna, is I just wanted to be with him at the end of his career. I just was a volunteer manager. And I just wanted to, just I knew he was getting close to retiring. I said, you know, I'd played a little bit in the NBA. I just want to be by his side and enjoy that. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then bang, that first year, I'm a volunteer manager. He goes to the Final Four, and I'm like, well, that seems pretty easy and pretty fun. I think uh, maybe I'll get into this coaching thing. And I was, I didn't realize that, but um, how, how tough it was. But that, um, it was a, a joy playing for him, coaching with him. I told Coach Kruger's son, I said, it, it, don't ever take it for granted. It's one of the greatest blessings you'll ever have. Yeah, two right here on the left side. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Tony, uh, yesterday, Mom, and he was saying how him and Coach Williford have grown really close this year, and Coach Williford has actually helped him a lot with his post moves. How has the relationship kind of evolved, and how important has Coach Williford been in, in Mommy's development? This yeah, year? well, Coach Williford, again, being a, the associate head coach, he's, he's done a terrific job. His mind for the game, uh, his ability to recruit, um, he's, when he wants, he'll be a terrific head coach. He's that good. Um, and um, so, again, 10 years, continuity's been important. I've seen him grow. Um, you know, Coach Sanchez actually was close with Mamadi, as, as the whole staff was, but I've seen um, Coach works with our bigger guys, Jay does, and, um, and I've seen him, you know, speak to Mamadi in the right way, and he's, um, he's been huge. So and they have a, you know, Mamadi is a unique, the question about him, he, he's a unique young man, and uh, he has such joy uh, on the court, off the court, and I've seen Jay challenge him, but also encourage him, and I think that's the balance that you have to have with young men today. In terms of talking about not taking anything for granted, I mean, with the success that you've had here, have you thought about the significance, the personal significance of, of getting to the Final Four should you win tomorrow? And I guess the second question is, is there a player like Carson Edwards uh, that you know, reminds you, uh, that he reminds you of, rather? Oh, man. It He's pretty unique. I mean, uh, he's so aggressive. I mean, there's been so many great guards in the ACC, and he's up there with them how he can score and, and do things. Um, no one comes to mind particularly right now. Um, but yeah, I, the significance, uh, I'd love it if it happened. Um, but I decided, you know, after last year, I, I told our guys, I said, what, what did that experience teach me? Um, you know, going through what we did, losing and, and all those things. And I said, I told the team this, and you guys have heard me say it before, um, it, it created a, a fire in me uh, that wanted to become a better coach and pursue trying to get these guys to as far as they can, a Final Four, a national championship. Um, and it, 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 there's, it's burning hot. But it did something I think maybe as significant or greater. It made me realize that if that never does happen, I'll still be okay because I've been blessed beyond what I deserve. And I think it's freed me up to go after this for as hard as I can, as hard as we can, 
and you know you use the word you hold it with open hands I think you have to have that and do does this do these guys want this does Purdue want this do I want that would I love to be a a son and a father who coached in a final four be great but if it doesn't happen you have to say hey are you going to be okay and that's what I learned and that's invaluable so I'm at peace but I'm very hungry Down the, about four more questions. Final four, if we can get them in, Coach. Three here and one here, and then we'll get you out of here. Seems like we've been up here a while. <laughs> this is your long session. Obviously, there's a history with the Bennetts and Purdue. Do you have a favorite Dick Bennett, Gene Cady story? <laughs> I played for Coach Cady, um, the 1991 Pan American team. I was the, the point guard for that team with Jimmy Jackson, Christian Leitner, Grant Hill, Walt Williams, the list goes on and on. But I played for Coach Katie. I loved it. It was a phenomenal experience in Havana, Cuba. We won the bronze medal. Jimmy Jackson got hurt in the semifinals. I can go on and on about that. But uh, such respect for, for Coach Katie, that program. I actually played against, when I was a senior in college, we played against Matt was on the team at Purdue. When I was a senior um, at Green Bay, we played in their Christmas tournament. Um, I remember two great coaches played in the elite eight in 2000 that was the year I was the volunteer manager and the only way I got to be on the bench is I had to give the water bottles and put the stools down that was my role otherwise because you only have so many so and actually I, there's a picture floating around of me in that game doing that uh, coach Soderberg was an assistant and his sister Megan and I were the the managers so that was our <laughs> job so kind of ironic but watching coach Katie and my father two coaches that you know you say I hope they get to coach in a Final Four because I know that's a dream of theirs. Um, that that was a you know special for me as a son. That is my greatest memory watching my father achieve that because I knew that was a dream of his. So seeing that battle, seeing those battles over the years, and just find men who are tough as nails, both of them. Those are um, old school blue collar guys that you you certainly learn a lot from. Front row, right side. Hey, Tony, Jeff Borzello, uh, ESPN. There was a, a moment last night toward the end of the game. I, I can remember if you had a one-on-one -on -one or two shots, and you were telling Mamadi to get on the line uh, to offensive rebound. Yeah. And Kyle sort of said, no, no, yeah. no, keep him back. So I wanted him there for the first one in case they missed. And Kyle, and, it was, and then the time was too late. And then if he made it, we were going to get him off for the second one. Okay. I just, um, do you feel like you, your guys are, or you empower or enable your guys enough to say, you know, if they have a different read to the situation than you, once they know, obviously, the tenets of, of what you guys do, empower or enable them to maybe call, call an audible, basically, on what, what you're saying? Absolutely. Well, I, I mean, depends. <laughs> but uh, London, I always ask London, Malcolm, those guys. Uh, tie in the game uh, it's, you say what, what are you seeing what are you feeling because I remember as a player sometimes you experience things and see things a little different than as a coach I mean I'm not too proud to say that they can sometimes give advice and they might have a suggestion that's been a key this year um, Isaiah was like that I can go down the list so for sure um, you know it's, it's not like they just do it all all the time but if there's something there and that situation was just it was kind of a, a broken situation um, but absolutely uh, you, you seek their advice you listen, um, we talk at halftime, and it is give and take. I and mean, then, you know, you obviously have to make the decisions, but I say that's accurate. Right in the back, back row. Hey, Tony, one more on Kihei. You mentioned earlier about him making some big plays last night. Have you found him more willing and eager to put himself in those moments from the time he was a freshman, finding his way to the point in the season now? Yeah, uh, well, he's so competitive. Uh, he's a winner, and he's shown that, and I think he did that when he was in, oh, I never saw him when he was in junior high, but in high school in the AU circuit, he did it at times, or even early in the year, you go back to the, um, the tournament in the Atlantis. Um, it just makes big plays, and yeah, we needed all those. Um, and so, probably getting more comfortable, he seems to seize the opportunity, but he's got something in him. He did it against Oklahoma, too. Okay, last question here in the front row. Sure. Tony, just pig, piggybacking on that, can you address Kihei's mental toughness and physical toughness, he just seems like he's yep. full of that. Unique. Um, I, there's just something about, I was fortunate to watch Muggsy Bogues uh, the three years I was his backup in Charlotte. And, um, you know, they, I remember, I think it was a video or a book, and it was, the title was Don't Tell Me No. Uh, I think that was it. And I watched that heart and that perseverance. And, you know, that's something that uh, you have to have, I, I think. That's, as a player, I tried to identify with that. I understood that. But when you see it, you know it. And, and I think I know it. And I think others know it. When I watched him and 
not a lot of people, well, he had verbally committed to UC Davis. Jimmy Les did an unbelievable job of getting him. And then when he, um, he decommitted, I called Coach Les, and I said, you know, first I wanted to make sure, is this legit, you know, what's going on? And we talked, and I said to him, am I seeing this right? And he said, yes, you are. He said, he, he's, he's special. And so he's got it that way. And he's got to keep improving, as they all do. But uh, in these settings, um, to have that kind of metal and that kind of um, stuff, it's, that's a good sign.